Okay, people for the YouTube, there's no one here yet, but there is um, one thing. So anyone who's watching us on YouTube, we're going to make a game in one hour. This is for the Death Ed Challenge. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to share this link quickly. So share, I'm just going to copy this link. So don't mind me, guys. How is everybody doing who's joined so far? Let's share this straight to Twitter. Um, uh, we are going live. Join us. We are going to make a game uh, in one hour. The Let's just check that's right. Do 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 do. How's everybody doing anyway? Uh, I don't know if anyone's in the stream chat yet. I'm just just looking around. Let me get your username. Let me get your username. Cool tweets. That's tweeted. We did the tweety tweet. There goes one of those tweet things. Cool. So so far, what's up, people? I see people slowly joining in. I'm just sharing this around to you know get it around. Um, let's go to the Discord channel. Do 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 do. So how is everybody doing today? Um, I hope you're all doing good. Okay, does my mic sound okay for people who are here? Um, let me know what my mic sounds like. We'll be we'll be starting a video soon. We're just waiting for it to fill up a little. We're doing the defel. Um, we're doing a Def Ed challenge. He's challenged all um, developers to make a game um, in one hour and record it. So I have a game idea. I'm not sure what we're going to do with it, but we'll see what happens. So let's just share this link around. Ba, 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 ba. Uh... Um, cool, 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 cool. All right, guys, so how is everybody doing? I'm not sure if everybody's here yet, but if you are, say hello in the chat. I'm just sharing out the link right now, although my YouTube is having a fit. <laughs> um, that's cool, that's cool. I hope the quality's good. If anything drops or anything like that, then please let me know. Um, cool, I think we're pretty good and we're pretty ready to go. Um, seven people in here right now apparently, so that's good. Um, so hi, hi people. I'm just going to open a terminal. And there it is. Let's clear that and I'm just going to bring this to the centre. So we're, we're pretty ready. Um, so we're going to be making a game in one hour and I'm going to start my timer in a minute. So once, once we've filled up and people say my mic's good and, you know, people start saying things, we'll, we'll get ready. So, um, all right, so we're three minutes in. I think we'll wait until about four minutes or five minutes and then we'll start, we'll, we'll go for it. So, I um, hope everyone's doing all right. Um, you know, I'm doing all right. I haven't live streamed in a very long time, so I'm a bit rusty, um, but I hope my internet connection's fine. It doesn't drop at any point, but I can see we've got 10 people in here now. Woo, 10 people, let's go. Um, but yeah, so in one minute we'll get started and we'll actually start building this game. So we'll set a timer and hopefully we can build a game in an hour. I, I've come up with an idea in my head. It's going to be like a shooting game. Um, we're going to be building it in vanilla JavaScript using HTML5 Canvas. So um, it'll be something you can learn. I was going to do it in Unity, but everyone really, really wants, um, everyone really wants that, um, what you call it, <laughs> that JavaScript, that JavaScript knowledge. So... Um, let's hope everything's going good. We've got, we've got, we've got quite a few people in here now, and I think, I think the stream's holding well. So that's good, guys. So we'll, we'll wait thirty more seconds, and then we'll start, guys. Twelve people in here. That's insane. Um, let's let's keep growing. We'll see what's happening. Yo, what's up? 
I don't know how to pronounce your name, Pafo Farah. I probably ruined your name. I'm sorry, but what's up, man? How's it going? We're, we're starting in literally seven seconds, five seconds. Let me get my time already. Oh, wait, guys, guys, I'm behind. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't say anything. Close your eyes. Pretend I didn't say anything. Wait, one second. Here we go. <laughs> Timer. <laughs> Let's set one. No, 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 no. Don't start that one. Uh, delete. Uh, add a timer for one zero 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 one hour start okay guys so we're gonna start now so I'm gonna make a new directory let's cd into my projects folder um, let's make the call it def ed challenge hyphen challenge yeah we'll cd into that the def ed challenge and let's open this up in code um Rafa Raphael said, um, I love your SAS crash course. Hey, thanks, man. Um, I'm going to be doing enough of SAS crash course because there's actually a lot more to it for that. That was a very basic one. So I'm going to do a proper advanced one with mix-ins, functions, and all that sort of thing in the future. So I hope you like that. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, your name is Autobel Paulino da Silva. I'm sorry if I butchered your name again. I'm not very good with names, guys. So, so far, we're just opening up a new VS Code instance. Let me bring it onto the right screen. Here we go. So we've got we've got this in VS Code. Uh, good, 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 good. Let's bring it over here. Um, let me know if the font text size is good and stuff. I'll, I'll make it a bit bigger in a second. So we'll create three files, index.html. I'm going to create a main.css and a main.js again this is a challenge not really a tutorial so um if you guys want to throw your ideas in the mix or whatever go ahead i'm happy for you guys to do that but i have an idea in my head i'm gonna make a shooting type of game so we're gonna be shooting things and yes yeah, so let's see what that is so let's zoom in a couple there hopefully that's big enough maybe it might be too big but we're just gonna say tab to get this stuff all sorted we'll call it the def ed challenge um i really should put a link to def ed's channel he's a great guy awesome dude um and really down to earth man uh let's do this and a funny guy and just great tutorials do you have a course for beginner in js not exactly right now prefera but i am looking for patho fera oh god i'm sorry i'm but i'm gonna call you p all right p um <laughs> We're going to, I'm going to do a, a more basic uh, level JavaScript tutorial from, from for beginners. Um, so hopefully that should be all right. And my thing is now saying my stream health is dropping a little. So I'm sorry if there's any internet delay or anything. I'm hoping it will recover in a minute. Um, so that should, hopefully it should be fine. Um, cool, so we've got the main CSS. Let's also set up the script source and we'll call it main.js. So we've got that. Um, we'll create a wrapper called, no, we'll create a canvas um, with the cat ID of game. Hit tab, and there we go. We'll give it a width, um, a basic static, static width of 600 and a height of 400 for now. I think that's fine. We'll start off with that. Um, and I think that's pretty good. Let's actually run this. So control alt T, um, and let's say live hyphen surfer dot and this should start running for us so cool 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 that's running on the wrong screen come on computer you know you know i use this screen when i record oh and now it's being weird it's being weird exit full screen there we go so we've got this little screen here i'll just pull it there for now let's go into our css and all i want to do is say canvas background color i'm going to set it to a two one two one two one i want it to be a dark canvas also makes it easier to see. So there we go. There's our canvas people. Um, hopefully that's good. Should the main JS link be in the head or in the bottom of the body? Um, hugs from Brazil, Tyler. Thanks. Hugs back back to Brazil. Um, um, Jean LaRose. I'm I'm sorry if I butchered your name again. I'm sorry. I'm not good with names. Um, but you, there's two different ways to do it. To be honest, um, you can do it in the head. It doesn't really matter too much now. You can. You can do stuff like um, wait until the document's ready and stuff. But I would suggest putting it at the bottom of your um, bef and before the, uh, the closing body tag because then that means it's waited for the rest of your DOM to load. Especially if you're doing DOM manipulation in it, it's probably best to pull it at the bottom. But again, I'm pretty hazy on it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't really matter nowadays either because you can do so many different things to counteract the loading time of your DOM. 
Um, so cool. So we have this canvas on screen here. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way I can lay this stuff out without. There we go. Let's bring it right down there, and then maybe we can bring this in. There we go. Hopefully the everything's big enough as well for you. Um, so said it perfectly. Oh, <laughs> good, good. I'm happy. Um, so we've got a few things we need to. We've got a few things we need to do. Um, one sec, my screen is being funny. Let's just shrink that down. See, I can't cut these broken bits out when, when, when that's the case. But yeah, okay. So first thing we need to do, we need to get a reference to the canvas. I don't know why I'm saying this like a tutorial. This isn't a tutorial. This is a, we've got to get this done in an hour else we fail the challenge sort of situation. Um, oh no, it's game, isn't it? So we've got a canvas with the name of game. Um, or the ID of game, should I say. And we're gonna get the context of that canvas. So I'm gonna say canvas dot get context, and we're gonna set it equal to a 2D. And then we're gonna set up a few variables. So I'm gonna want the mouse position. So I'm gonna set the mouse position to start with, equal the X equal to the width divided by two, and the Y equal to the canvas, oh, canvas dot height divided by two. Um, I think that should be fine. Um, what are people saying? Uh, there's already plenty of JavaScript beginner tutorials. The whole internet is flooded with it. Yeah, that's that's to Sean Mark. Uh, am I saying that right, Gene Mark? I don't. Again, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, but yeah, um, that that is true. But I always think there's a new spin to JavaScript every so often. So, I mean, there's people do it differently, and I guess people like to learn differently. Um, sorry, so we've got the mouse now. Let's actually add an event listener and we'll call it mouse move. And when the mouse moves, we're gonna get the event and we're gonna do an arrow function and I'm just gonna quickly go in here and say mouse.x is equal to the event.client, oh, the client x. Um, and then, oh, wait, that's not what I want to do. Um, and then we're gonna say mouse.y is equal to the event.client y. So all this does is get the mouse, the mouse position x and the mouse position y, and we're setting it equal in this object here. That's good. So let's console log this out. Um, we'll just say console.log mouse save. Let's open up a terminal over here. Uh, God, okay, uh, let's move that to the bottom because we're kind of working in that way and there you go you get the as i move my mouse around it's moving in the um down there it's a bit laggy i think that's because i'm recording um so i'm sorry about that okay cool so we've got the mouse being set um i guess the next thing is to set a point system and some enemies so let's say let's uh, we're actually going to set a few things. We're going to say let points equal zero because we're going to start on zero points, of course. Um, and then we're going to say let enemies equal an empty array. And we're also going to have a bullet array because this is going to hold all the bullets we shoot out of our gun, if, if you get what that means. Um, so cool. So we've got those. Um, how are we doing on time? We're 10 minutes in. We need to speed up a little bit, but I think we're all right. Um, so... We've got this, so we're setting up some points. We've got our points, we've got our enemies, and we've got our bullets. That's good. We need to set up a few functions. We need an init function. So I'm gonna say function init or start if you may. I'm gonna capitalize each one. For when I make games, I like to capitalize the function names. I don't know why, it's weird, but don't judge me. I'm gonna have an update function, um, which is gonna be called every single uh, frame or 60 frames per second. What kind of game is he making? Hey, Rai, I'm going to be making a shooter style game. So you're, it's going to be a block. I'm, I'm aiming to do, it's going to be like an arcade game, but it's going to be like a character or a player here. And then you're going to shoot bullets at enemies that are trying to get across your enemy line. And you've got to stop them from getting across the enemy line, if that makes sense. Kind of like that. I, I think there's games like this before, um, some fun ones, but mine's going to be quite basic. So I've only got an hour to do it, but maybe in the future, if you want to see more, maybe we can we can do more on the game. So, um, so I'm going to call in it or no start. Sorry, I've called it start function, and then I'm going to call the update function too at the bottom of my file, um, which is all good. Uh, why do I keep doing that? Um, so we'll call that, and then we're actually going to in the update function. We're going to call something um, uh, update function. We're going to call something called request 
animation frame and we're going to pass through the update function again and what this does is it calls this function 60 frames per second and then that will keep running if that makes sense so it goes in a loop and it'll constantly call this um, another thing we want to do is say ctx dot clear rect and I'm going to say 0 0 and I'm going to say canvas dot width and canvas dot height the reason I'm doing that is because I want to clear the canvas every single frame so it's never the same pixels appearing multiple times on the same frame in the same position they were when you first initiated them um does my mic sound all right by the way guys uh, I just want to double check because I mean I, I, no one's complained about it so I'm hoping that's good but as long as if you need my mic being loud or anything then let me know I can always increase the gain on it or whatever <laughs> uh, cool so we've got start function and we've got some other things um cool 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 so that's good let's get the player on screen so actually before we get play, we want to create a class. We're going to make this a class-based system. Um, so up here, I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it circle, because you're going to be passing a circle through. And then we're going to get the constructor. Con how do you spell it? Constructor. That's it. We're going to pass through x, a y, a radius, and a color. And I'm going to say this.x equal to x this dot y is equal to y this dot radius is equal to r and this dot color is equal to c so hopefully that should be clear this is we're creating a class called circle oh we don't need that because that's a function based thing we're then getting the constructor and we'll con constructor and we're passing through an x position which will be its x value the y value the radius and the color so that is, hopefully that makes sense um, and then we're going to add a couple of different elements in here so we're going to create a method called draw and what this draw function will do is draw the item to the page every frame so we're going to say begin path um, and then we're going to say ctx.arc we're going to say this dot x with this dot y this dot radius zero math dot pi times two sorry let me scroll down a little um and then false because we don't want it to be anti-clockwise um we're then gonna say ctx dot fill style and we're gonna set that equal to this dot color and finally we're gonna say ctx dot fill 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 good and then we're going to say ctx dot close path nice so let's create an update function in this which is literally just going to call this dot draw so normally you do all your physics rendering and that in here um, but i'm just going to call it um, this dot draw perfect so this is a whole circle element now we're going to start this up by creating a player so we'll say let player and it's going to be set to nothing but we're going to say play is equal to a new circle so there's how you call a class and we're going to pass for an x position so we're going to say the x is equal to zero the y will be canvas dot height divided by two the radius i'm going to make it 30 and the color for now let's say what color so ff5858 or maybe a yellow ffce00 and then inside the update we're going to say player dot update hit save and there we go we've got a yellow dot on the screen which is pretty awesome so i'm just going to quickly show you something so instead of doing the um canvas dot height we're actually going to, actually, we're going to go in here that's going to be the individual but we're going to say player dot x is equal to um mouse dot x and player dot y is equal to mouse dot y now if we hit save you can see it's now following our mouse so i just want to show you that's how you would get to follow your mouse we don't actually want that we want it to always be in the one position but that is how you would update it so now it's going to always sit there and we're going to shoot from this guy at enemies which are going to be spawning on the right side um how's this looking so far sorry i'll, I'll just quickly read chat she was again it's fine mic is great audio and font size are fine i love this that's good why mouse is a let it never changes um, the mouse position will change and that's um yeah so the mouse position changes every time it moves so it can't be a const it has to be a let um 
but if I do make mistakes like that, please pick it up. I would love to. I'd love to get corrected because it makes me a better developer. <laughs> um, cool. So we've got the player. We've got loads of other stuff to play us in. We've got to make some bullets. So we want to shoot bullets, and that is the first thing we're going to do. So first, let's actually go back at the top where we created the event listener, and let's make enough for event listener, and let's call it click. And we're going to call click. When we click the button, we want to call a function called shoot. I'm then going to add enough for event listener, and this one's going to listen for a key press, which is going to be enough for um, arrow function, which is going to say if event.code is equal to space, which is the space bar we're going to also call shoot. So let's under here, under the circle, before the start one, we're going to create a function called shoot. And in here, we'll just go console.log shoot. Cool. So we've got that. Let's go in here and let's click. See in the bottom, bottom down here, you can see as I click it, hits shoot. If I press space bar, it also shoots too which is good. So this is where we're going to spawn some bullets. Uh, so we're going to do, do some hellfire on people from here. Um, so first things first, let's create the bullet entity. So we're going to say let bullet equal new circle. And we're going to give it the player.x and the player.y. So it's going to shoot from the center of our player. We're going to give it a radius of 15 and the color of white. Um, and then I think if we now just say, we now need to move the bullet towards the mouse. So there's gonna be quite a lot of functionality here, but I'll try and explain it the best I can. So we're gonna say the MX, which is the mouse position when we first fired the gun. So the bullet.mx is the mouse position it's aiming for. It's gonna be called um, uh, bullet.mx is equal to mouse x. We'll say bullet.my is equal to mouse.y. This is actually irrelevant, to be fair, this MX. Um, I'm actually gonna comment out, but this one way you can set up a new variable. Um, I'm actually gonna say the let velocity x equal um, mouse.x minus bullet.x. So we're gonna move, get the distance between the two. And we're gonna say let vy equal um, mouse.y minus bullet.y. There we go, that will be set. Um, and then we're gonna say let the speed of the bullet, we're just gonna equal it to six. Um, and then we're gonna say the distance is gonna be between, um, so we get the distance, which is gonna be a square root. Um, I'm gonna do a lot of algorithms and algebra, you know, the thing we thought we'd never need. Uh, phi x times phi x plus phi y plus phi y, I think that's how math works. That should get us the square, um, square root and these with the power of two. Um, so it's the same as doing two to the power of two, etc. kind of basic, something like that. <laughs> Bullet dot DX, so we're gonna create a direction or a direction X, and we're gonna say equal to phi X divided by the distance, and we're gonna say, oh, we're also gonna set the bullet dot DY equal to the phi Y divided by the distance. Now, let me explain what, oh, let's actually finish off. So we actually now assign dx equal to times speed. So now we need to times it by the speed. So it obviously moves at the speed we want it to. Okay, now let me explain this. So what's happening here is we're getting a velocity x um, and we're setting the mouse. We're getting the distance between the mouse where we clicked and the bullet, oh, the bullet bullet.x. So we're getting the distance and we're calculating the distance between the bullet and the um, mouse. We're then getting the same with the y on the y position, so the up and down, um, and the speed. We're setting the speed equal to 6. We're then getting the distance between the two points by basically... Do so if you've ever heard of the Pythagoras theorem, um, it's a really good theorem which helps you get the distance off a triangle. So if you've got um, um, a triangle here, and then you're trying to calculate the position of the C and you've got A and B, you need to do this to get C. If that makes sense, I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Google Pythagoras <laughs> um, and cool. And then we're doing all this stuff to do that. <laughs> so then we're gonna get bullets. So the bullets array we create, we're gonna push this bullet. We're gonna hit save and then 
let's just check the chat. Everyone following along. Um, it doesn't. Only X and Y do. This is awesome. Properties of the object can change in const. Of the object. Oh, I'm creating an object. Mm, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Can they? Yes. Cool. But like, thanks, uh, Jacob. Yeah, I noticed it luckily. Um, cool. Let's crack on with this then. So let's go down to update. And in update, we want to... So we've created a shoot function which goes shoot a bullet. We now want, so if I click now, if I refresh over here and I shoot, bullets are being spawned, but you can't see them because they're going to be behind my player and we haven't actually drew them yet, draw, drawn them yet. So we need to now say um, for, so let's comment this, bullets. We'll say for let i equal zero. So we're just going to do a standard for loop. And if i is less than bullets.length, i plus plus and let's just say let bullet equal bullets i or i and now we're going to say bullet dot x is plus equal to the bullet dot dx um, which is its direction x so this is we're now adding the velocity each frame so we're going to say bullet dot y is plus equal bullet dot dy dy which is cool um, and now if we just say bullet dot update hit save now hopefully when I shoot there you go we've got bullets going in the direction we want to now if I shot a million of these the game's gonna get really laggy because they're just gonna keep going forever as you can see the game is starting to slow down a little now to fix that we just need to clear them if they go out of bounds so I'm gonna say if um, Oh, I'm going to break this down. If bullet dot x is less than zero, or if bullet dot x is greater than canvas dot width, or if the bullet dot y is less than zero, again, same thing on the y axis now, we're going to say, or if the bullet dot y is greater than canvas dot height. Um, so if any of these are true, we're just going to say bullets dot splice and we're going to give it the i and 1. So what we're saying here is we're going to say we're going to remove this bullet. If it goes out of map, we're going to remove the bullet from the DOM and we're just going to quickly console.log bullets. Oh. Cool, let's hit save. And as I shoot, you see nothing happens, and then we get an empty array back. But if we shoot three, we had three, one goes, two goes, so you can see it shows we had two, and then we had enough one, but then they're gone, sort of thing. If that makes sense, they're there, and then they're gone. So I was open this early, you'll see they're there, and that's where all the circles were before they disappeared. <laughs> if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so we're just removing it. So cool, we've got bullets. Um, is everybody cool with that? People understand, that's cool. Let's crack on then. We've got bullets, now we need to actually create some enemies. Cool, we're actually doing cracking time, so I might have time for us to, you know, spice the game up a little as well. So we've got bullets, now we need enemies. Um, enemies are a little bit different. We have to create something what's gonna, we're gonna, we've gotta create some sort of timer that works with um, spawning them. So we need to basically give a timer. So we're going to say let um, spawn timer equal, what, 150 maybe? Um, but we're actually going to say, we're going to say let um, the original timer equal 150. And then we're just going to set the spawn timer equal to 100. Uh, might look like I'm duplicating code here. This one could be a const. Um, but it's, you'll understand why, because when we want to reset the timer for spawning, we need to have an original, um, which is cool. So now before bullet or after bullets, um, before the player, we're going to create enemies. Um, and under here, we're just going to quickly say spawn timer minus minus, and then we're going to say if spawn timer is less than zero, Less than or equal to zero. Spawn timer is equal to original timer. And we're just going to console.log spawn enemy. 
Now this doesn't add much randomness to the um, to the spawner. So you can see it says spawn enemy, then after enough a set of time it will say spawn enemy, and then after the time gets back down, so again it'll say spawn enemy, but it's always consistent. We kind of want it to be, it, we want it to get faster over time, if that makes sense. So to do that, we're going to, uh, we're going to say, we're going to do what we've done, but instead of doing this spawn timer like this, we're actually, actually, we need to change the original timer to be a const to a let. So I'll, I actually need to change this value over time, um, which is completely against what we've done. So let's say original timer oh, is equal to, and we'll say original timer times 0 0.98 and then we're going to say if it's more than 60, then we're going to set it to the original timer times 0 0.98, else we're going to sell it to 60. Now, this might be confusing, but again, all we're saying here is this is a ternary operator, and what we're saying is the original timer times 0 0.98, so it's going to get slightly smaller every single time this is called. We're going to say, as long as it's above 60, because we don't want it to become too quick, where one spawning literally every second or more. Um, the original timer, then we set it to that, else we're going to set it to 60. So then we're just going to say uh, spawn timer is equal to the original timer, um, which is obviously changed. And then we're going to create a, we're going to call spawn enemy, but this time we're actually going to spawn enemy we're going to create a function called spawn enemy um, so let's go back up just above this just under the bullets we're going to call uh, spawn enemy so we're going to say function spawn enemy and there we go so the spawn enemy script we're going to write is probably going to be quite simple i think we're just going to say let enemy equal a new circle, I think circles in our game. <laughs> uh, we're gonna say canvas start width. So it's gonna spawn at canvas start width and then we're gonna get him to spawn on the Y um, with a random int. So we're gonna create a function called random int from range. Um, and we're gonna pass 20 and it's gonna also gonna take canvas start height uh, minus 20. So it spawns either with its radius um, and then we're actually going to give it its radius, which is going to be 20, and we'll spawn it as red, because, you know, enemies are red. Let's create that function. Let's bring it all the way up here, just here. So we're just going to say function random int from range. We're going to give it a min and a max value. And we're just going to return math.floor. Um, and we're going to get math.random. And then we're going to times it by max minus min plus one plus min hit save and i think that should be good so it's going to be spawning enemies but we actually are, we're not going to see that yet because underneath this spawn enemy we need to say enemies dot push and we're just going to say enemy which is cool now we need to actually spawn the enemy in our um in our loop or in our update function. So in here, after the bullets, or just after enemies, so we've got the spawn timer, after we've spawned them, we're then gonna loop through them. So um, I'm actually gonna do another for loop. So I'm gonna say for let i equal zero again. We're gonna say i is less than enemies dot length i plus plus. Um, we're then going to say let enemy equal enemies i and then we'll say enemy dot x is minus equal to 3 so we're going to move him backwards because he's going to spawn over this side somewhere we're going to move him backwards by 3 um, each time you can up or down this if you want or you can create it random so they come at random speeds so actually let's do that we'll say random int from range and we're going to say the min is 3, the max is 5. So you can be any speed between 3 and 5. Um, we're then going to say if enemy.x. Actually, is that going to... 
Oh, we need to set this at the start. So we're going to say we have enemy dot speed, but we're going to need to go set this because if we spawn it there, the enemy's going to fluctuate in speed, which we don't want. So we need to say enemy dot speed is equal to the random int. I think, right? Yeah, that's good. So cool. So we're going to minus the speed, and then we're going to say if enemy dot x. Well, for now, we just want to say enemy dot update. I think. Um, so that should spawn it. So if we come here, oh look, there comes one, and we shoot it, bam, it just goes straight through. But you can see they come at different speeds now. So one will spawn slightly faster than the other, and they'll just keep spawning, and they spawn at different random locations with different speeds. God, that's going to get hard, isn't it? <laughs> with how fast they come, um, and then we'd have to shoot them. So that's what we're up against so far. What's up? Make that game, boy. <laughs> What's up, Eki Squid? I don't know if I pronounced your name right. It does look good. Spawning at one of a sixth of a second. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what the time is. It's obviously animation frame. I think it's 60 frames per second. So whoever wants to do the math, do the math. I don't know the math. I'm, I do certain math, not all math. I do a little math, not, not many math. Yeah, <laughs> math hard. <laughs> Um, cool, so we've got the enemy spawning, but one thing we want to do is now we want to check if they go out of the map again. But to do that, we just want to say if enemy.x is less than zero, I'm going to say enemies.splice, not splice, splice. And we're going to pass through i and then one. We just want to remove it, so let's save that. Um, and we want to set the points equal to zero. So I know we haven't calculated any points yet, but we want to set it to zero. And we also want to set the original timer back to its original state, which was 150. Um, so we reset the whole speed of them spawning. So obviously they're going to spawn slightly quicker each time. Um, and now this time we'll set it back to the 150 it was. So now every time they go out of the map, they should be getting removed. So they should be being destroyed. So if we console log in here, console.log enemies, hit save. So you'll see that one comes along and gets destroyed. So there's no ink in the array. So it's just that way. It says there's one, but that's because one just spawns over there. So you can see they're spawning, but then as soon as they're gone, they're gone. There's only one and so forth, so forth. So that's good. Um, so that's showing that now we need to check if the bullet hits the enemy. So now if I shoot currently and my bullet hits them, it doesn't actually do anything. It's not, it's just going straight through them. So we need to use the Pythagoras theorem again to get the distance between the bullet and the enemy and check if they're touching. Um, and to do that, we need to go to, well, we could say inside the enemies and then we need to loop through the bullets again. I know we've looped through the bullets up further, but we want to loop through them again inside of this one. So we're going to say let j this time is equal to zero. I'm going to say j is less than bullets.length. Uh -huh, I'm going to add plus plus for the j. Um, and I'm going to say let bullet equal bullets j. Uh, I'm going to say let A, so this is going to be our three points of our triangle. So we're going to get the A point, which we know is bullet.x minus enemy.x. Uh, and then we're going to get, I'm going to, well, this one should probably be, should be AX, shouldn't it? And then this should be AY. Um, so this will be equal to bullet.y minus enemy.y. And then we'll say let distance equal math dot uh, square root and we'll say ax times ax plus b not bx ay plus ay times ay sorry um, and that gets us the distance between it um, and now we need to so to figure out when you say if distance if distance is less than bullets.radius, we're going to pl plus the enemy.radius. So we need to get the circle radius and add those together so we can take that away from the distance because obviously the points are in the center of the circle. So we need to plus the radius on top of this. Um, so if the distance is less than that, 
Um, that means the enemy and the bullet have collided. So we'll go enemies.splice. Why do I keep doing splice? Uh, so we're gonna say uh, that. And we're gonna say bullets.splice j1. And then I'm just gonna say points plus equal 100. Um, and let's console.log these points. Hit save. So now, if we refresh this page, the enemies go spawn. There's one, if I shoot and I hit, it disappears and we get 100 points. If I get this guy, we're up to 200 points. But now, if I let him hit across the edge, and then I hit the next one, we'll back at 100 points. So that's how the point system's gonna be working. And now we just need to actually display the point system, guys. So what do you think of that so far? Uh, you guys, do you guys understand the Pythagoras theorem? Theory, Pythagoras. <laughs> it's kind of simple. You're getting the distance. You're just minusing the x and the x away at two points. We've got point one and point two x. You minus in that to get the distance between the x values. You're minusing the y from each other to get the distance of the y's. And then you're, you're using square root to combine them together to get the total distance away from each other. And then we're just checking if that distance is far, far enough away from the bullet radius to count for anything. Or close enough, should I say. Yeah, does that make sense to people? Are you guys following along? Are you guys enjoying yourselves? I hope you are, because I am. I like making games. Um, what are we on timer-wise? So in theory, we have a working game. and It's only been 36 minutes. So we are doing great, but we need to display the points on screen because I don't want to just display them there. So under the player, I'm going to say ctx.fill or fill style. It's going to be equal to um, white. We're then going to say ctx.font is equal to what font should we use? Sans serif, I guess. We'll say 28 pixels sans serif and we'll say ctx.fill text and now this will take a string which will be points and then we'll plus on our actual points it also takes an x value which we're going to say canvas dot uh, width divided by two um, and then a height which we're just going to give it 50. we actually want to set the ctx.align text i think it's equal to center because else it will be off center slightly and then we'll say ctx dot is it fill is it fill do you need to do fill no because that's what fill text does isn't it save does that show anything uh ct oh where did i do ct ctx there we go so the points up there but that's wrong align text here line text why is it am i doing it wrong um it is it, oh, it's not a line text, it's text line, isn't it? God, I'm such a fool. There we go, so that's in the center. And now, when we get, oh, why are you at the bottom? No, no, no. Oh, wow, failed straight away. Failed miserably. Oh, uh, there we go, so we've got 100 points, 200 points. I could play this all day. See, we've got a game. This is essentially a game. This is what a game is, isn't it? It's like you play and you enjoy, I think. I enjoy this. <laughs> don't know about you guys. But you can turn this into a game where you can move your character and everything. So I, you'd need to work out how you would do the movement, but you could probably use WAXD, move your character along by a certain amount of pixels and move them around and shoot these guys before they get to the end. Ah, I messed up. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm losing it, guys. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Okay, guys, do you guys have any suggestions what you guys want me to try and do to this game? So Death Ed, I think I've completed your challenge and I mean... I think I'm obviously the winner for your challenge, so you might as well pick me as your winner. Thank you, Def Ed. <laughs> um, guys, don't forget to check out Def Ed's channel. It's um, Def Ed. Type it in in the Google or YouTube or anywhere, and he'll come up with Def Ed. Def Ed's Def Ed. He's awesome. Follow him. Subscribe to him. Become his friend. Um, <laughs> bam. Um, so that's cool. So we've got those points. Um, again, guys, anything you guys want me to to go over or do you guys have any questions did, did i go too far do you want me to explain any code um i've still got i could end the stream here if you wanted but i've got 20 minutes so tell me what you want um, so how's everybody's day going what what can we do to this game to make it a bit more fun what can we add to it 
Maybe we can add levels. <laughs> you level up your character and buy new guns. That'd be cool, but I don't think I'll be able to do that in a short amount of time. Anybody interested in helping me make this game any better? Because, I mean, right now I'm just, you know, destroying it. Can we get to a score of 3,000? I think that's that's an achievement. Uh, um, pop, pop, you go. Bang goes you. And F1. Oh, no, we can't because I'm not good at games, of course. I'm blaming my recording. I'm under pressure, guys. That's why. Um, but guys, I guess that's it then. If nobody has any questions and nobody's really, uh, really wants to any has any questions for it, basically, or no one's enemies that need two hits. Oof. Okay. Okay. Ooh. I don't know now. Um. So we're gonna have to create a different type of enemy, or maybe we have to create enemy health points. So we could say when we create an enemy, we could say enemy dot health. Is equal to. Um, will you upload the Git the project to GitHub? I will do. Um, I will pull it on GitHub for when I actually when the video go. I'll pull it in the, the GitHub link in the description as well. Maybe I'll do it in a minute as well. But let's try and do some health. So let's do random. So let's literally copy this and do this and say, well, actually, let's give it up here, and we'll give it a level. We'll say. Let level equal this and we'll give it between one and two because we want to say it's level between one and two and we'll give it the level because that'll, that'll be its hit points. But then we'll say if enemy dot level is equal to two. So if it's equal to two, we'll say enemy dot color is equal to, we've got to give it a different color. Have the player move up and down. Cool, we'll add that into. Um, so we'll give the enemy color. What color could we do? Um, we'll make them um, blue. Blue is just a random color. Cool. So now when we refresh that page, so that's the standard one. Um, obviously, we need to add in the hit mark. I just want to see how likely we are to get a blue one. Have I done it right? I haven't seen one blue one yet. Have I done it right? So that colors right, right? Enemy dot color is equal to blue. I haven't seen one blue one. Anyone seen a blue one? Am I losing my mind? Should we console log? So dot log level. Let's see what happens when they spawn. So this one is level two. So that one should be blue, but it's not. Why is it not blue? Enemy dot color. That's right, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Guys, what am I doing wrong here? Uh, so let's go down to the circle or up to the circle. Uh, where's the circle function? So we're setting this dot color and color is like that and then fill style there. Hmm. And is it saying here? Can I, if I, oh, is it, is it blue? Let's, uh, Hit save. Let's try that. It probably is that, to be honest. I mean, it shouldn't be because two. That's more of a comparison. So that's one. That's fine. That's one again. That's a two. So this one, that one should be blue. Why is wrong with you? Or what's wrong with me? Enemy dot color is equal to blue. It should be rerun every time, right? So that should work. But blue isn't being, that's a good point. This isn't being called at all. Um, Enemy.level. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's not enemy.level, it's just level. Oh, I'm a fool, guys. So that one should be fine. Again, that one's red. Now we should see a blue one anyway. So we've had three. That's a fourth one. <laughs> That's enough for one. Where's the blue? <laughs> We're literally just getting ones now. Did I break it over here? No, it's still one to two. All right, I'm refreshing. There's something bugged. Okay, we're going to get a two. There it is. There we go. So that would be a two hit point. So let's go down to it. So now we've got that. Let's remove the console logs. God, that was, a, that was hard. Um... So we're setting that equal to blue, um, and now it's health is equal to two. So now we're going to say 
Where are we? Here, so we're going to say if it hits the enemy. Oof, where are we? If it hits the enemy, we're going to, instead of completely shoot, destroy him, so we're going to say enemy dot health minus minus. I would say if enemy dot health is greater than or less than less than or equal to zero we're then going to remove the enemy and then we're going to add our points so we're actually going to remove his health rather than destroy him straight away so let's refresh so that's a red he should just disappear straight away cool that still works destroy him come on give me a blue give me a blue give me oh he almost got past are we come on we're still gonna get where's my blue boys Come on, give me a blue. Give me a blue. There's a blue. So hit him one. So that took two shots. I had to spam it because I was going to miss. So it does take two shots and it does work. So one, two. There we go. Nice. There we go. So we've got two shots in. Do you have a GitHub account? Yes, I do. It's Tyler Potts DE fee. So Tyler Potts death. Um, cool, so what's the next one people ask? To move it up and down. So if we use W, we'll head up. If we use S, we'll go down. Let's do that. So let's go up to player, where we initialize player. Where do we initialize player? Here. Uh, we'll create a function. Um, we'll create it down here because I'm being lazy. We'll create a function called move or move player. And we'll listen for, we'll call this on... Um, Oh, I guess we'll use the key press, I guess. So up here, when we get an event listener off um, key press, we'll say if event.code is equal to, is it just A? Would you say W for a W? Console.log up. Save. So now if I press W, no, let's quickly console.log. I can't remember what the key code is. .log event.code. So now if I press up, that's key W, right? That makes sense. Key W. Save. So now if we press up, you can see we go up. So now we want to say move player we'll do double capital and then we're going to give this the value of let's say one for up and two for down i don't know we could pass anything we want so if we now get this copy paste we'll change this for two and we'll say in here s um and now let's go down to uh where are we where are we where are we did we create oh we removed it okay so we'll say player function was it move player move player and then we're going to pass through the direction <laughs> if direction or we could do a switch let's switch it up but that was a very sad joke uh wait i want all i feel come on give me all i feel uh, there we go uh so we'll say direction and we'll say if it's equal to one then we'll say player dot or player dot y is up isn't it is plus equal to what five um we'll say case two we'll say player dot y is plus minus equal to five and we'll say break save there we go oh i've got it backwards uh, come on, let me shoot. Okay, he's a little slow. Oh, and I've done it on key press. We want it on if key down, don't we? Um, where are we? Back up, back up, back up to the event listener. Let's cut these out. And let's say add event listener key down function or an event. paste that in hit save there we go so now if i hold it down it actually moves bam oh wait that was a two one oof that could have been bad 
There we go. So that works. We're moving up and down. What's next, guys? Uh, let's actually make that a bit better, though, because we're moving up and down, but it's a bit slow. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little slow. Uh, and this is also backwards. So that one needs to be minus, and that needs to be plus. Uh, and that needs to be 10, and that needs to be 10. Save. There we go. There we go. It's a little faster. Bam. Oh, bam. You're dead. Uh, bam, bam. Ah, oh, messed up. Okay, cool. Bang. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is enough of feature added to our game, and we're still on time. We've still got 10 minutes left. Um, I'm not sure we can get much done in 10 minutes, but I feel like we can still do something. So what does everybody else want to see? Anybody got anything else you want me to do? I just punched them. Juice carton. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have added in an up and down feature. We could even add in left and right. Do you want to do left and right for any particular reason? Um, if this was a real project, would you keep everything in one file or split it up into different files? Um, I'd probably use, um, what you call it? I would split it up into different files. I'd probably use um, Webpack or something or something to compile it. Do you die if they hit you? So you don't die if they hit you. What happens is your point, so look, if I kill him and then I kill him, uh, and then if, let's say so this one's a double, cool, so if this guy now gets through, so I, it doesn't have to hit me, but if he gets past this wall, past zero, our points get reset to zero, so you don't essentially die, but you do get reset to zero. We could end, add an end screen, like game over, but I kind of like it to be a flowing game. Oh, we're getting a lot of twos. Oof, and a one. Oh. Oh, the one was the one who always got part. Guys, this is the best we've ever done at this game. And we made it harder for ourselves. <laughs> oh, yes. So, yeah, if they hit you, um, or if they get past you, should I say, you um, you reset your points. So that's pretty cool. Um, shall I... I'll, I'll start uploading this to... Um, I'll upload this to GitHub after. I'll tweet it out, the GitHub link, and I'll also pull it in the description once this video actually... I think it publishes straight away, right? So it'll be in the description of this live stream. Um, so I think that's pretty good. Anyone got any questions or anything you want me to do? Any... Did you everybody understand the code all right? I mean, it, again, it wasn't really supposed to be a tutorial. It was more supposed to be a challenge, which DefEd set. So, uh, but I really enjoyed doing it myself. So that's a good thing, I think. Um, how is everybody doing? Is everybody doing good in their careers? Is everybody looking to become a, a big top dog web developer making a lot of salary? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying now. This is the awkward conversation part, guys. You gotta help me here. <laughs> um, what What do we want to do? Do we want to? Do we think this is it? Do you think this game has hit its maximum potential, and we need to we need to give up before before stuff goes wrong? <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think it's hit hit what it can be for now, or do you want to see more? <laughs> Let me know. I'm happy to do another couple of features if you guys have feature ideas. But um, I think we're doing, um, I think we've got quite a lot of good, good stuff. So I think that's good. I oh, know. Um, so, all right, so I think we've, we've hit the pinnacle of this. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Um, we, um, yeah, so, all right, guys, thank you for watching this live stream. If you enjoyed it, um, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more then don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. We do this sort of thing often, not too often, but often. If you want to see more live streams as well, let me know in the comment section below. Um, thank you for watching this video, guys, and uh, peace out, live stream. Thanks for watching.